Welcome to Electron Online. I've been asked by some viewers to explain the concept of momentum in a more fundamental fashion. And I thought, well, let me go look and see what videos I had. And sure enough, I'd never really explained what momentum is down at the very basic concept. So here's a few videos, starting with this one, to try and explain what momentum really is. First of all, let's do it graphically. And there's, by the way, two kinds of momentum. We'll get into that in a moment. But typically, we think of it as an object that's moving at some velocity. So the momentum, which is written with the, with the uh, letter P, P stands for momentum, is the product of the mass of the object times its velocity. So we may have a very small mass, but if it's moving at a very large velocity, it will have a lot of momentum. If the mass is kind of average and the velocity of average, it still has a fair amount of momentum. And even though the object may be moving very slowly with a very small velocity, if it has a lot of mass, it still has a lot of momentum. Well, that still doesn't explain what momentum is, but here's a nice definition of it. Momentum is the tendency of an object to keep moving once it's in motion. So once an object is in motion, the more mass it has, and the faster it's moving, the more momentum it has. And if you look at this second sentence then, to change the momentum of an object will require a force applied for a certain duration. So if you want to change the momentum of an object, let's say an object is moving, it's rolling on wheels, and you want to slow it down, change its momentum, because when you change the velocity, you change its momentum, you will have to apply a force. You will have to push against it, and the longer you push, the slower it will go, and eventually you can stop it. Or, if you want to get something mo moving, it will require force because when something is not moving, it has no momentum. And if you want to give momentum to an object, you'll have to push against it for a certain amount of time. The harder you push, or the longer you push, the more momentum you will give the object. Now, I did mention there are two kinds of momentum. One is what we call linear momentum. When a car is rolling, when a bicycle, when someone is riding a bicycle, typically these objects, person and a bicycle, a car, a rolling ball, a flying ball, anything like that, it will be, at first it has a certain amount of mass and it will be moving at a certain amount of velocity, typically in a straight path, in a straight line. So we call that linear momentum and so the momentum is simply the product of the mass times velocity. Now take a note that momentum is actually a vector quantity, which means it has magnitude and direction, and that is because velocity is a vector quantity. So we multiply the mass times velocity, mass being a scalar, velocity being a vector, that means momentum is going to be a vector as well. There's a second type of momentum called angular momentum. We can also think of it as rotational momentum. An object that is rotating has momentum. The larger the object, the more mass, the faster it's moving, the more momentum it has, the more angular momentum it has, and we use the letter L to indicate angular momentum. Well, angular momentum is the product of the moment of inertia times the angular velocity. Notice the similarity. Instead of using mass, we use moment of inertia, which has something to do with how easy it is for an object to be rotating, and omega, of course, is the angular velocity, the way we express how fast something is rotating. The faster it's rotating, the larger the angular velocity. Notice omega is V over R. If we take a point at the edge of the disk and we measure the radius of the disk, then omega will simply be equal to the velocity divided by the radius, which is called the angular velocity. The moment of inertia of a solid disk is half the mass of the disk times the radius squared. So if you need to know more about the moment of inertia, there's lots of videos in the channel to show you what that is as well. But at least now you have an idea that an object can have momentum, angular momentum if it's rotating, and it can have linear momentum if it's moving in a straight line. Finally, the nice thing about the concept of momentum in physics is that momentum is always conserved. In other words, any collision that happens between any number of objects, let's call it a system, the system, the momentum of the whole system is always conserved. In other words, the initial momentum before the collision always, without exception, equals the final momentum. And so let's say we have two objects that are colliding. 
if we multiply the mass times the velocity of the first object, and we add that to the mass times the velocity of the second object, that's the total momentum of the system before the collision equals the mass times the velocity of the first object after the collision plus the mass times the velocity of the, of the second object after the collision. So the, this is I stands for initial, before, F stands for final, after. Now remember that direction is important because after all, momentum is a vector quantity, so when something is moving to the right, we consider that positive direction. When something is moving to the left, we consider that negative direction. So when you work out this equation, we'll show you some examples, simple examples later, we have to take into account the sign for the direction. Direction is important. So this hopefully will give you a good concept of what momentum actually is and why momentum is important. In the next few videos we'll show you some more details to get more comprehension on the concept of momentum.